And we're coming to the end of our programme today here at Paris Live PM. But for today's edition of Live on Live, I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Emre Demir, who's the chief editor of Zaman France. You're very welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, um, Emery, you know, this is, uh, we're really talking today um, on the back of uh, what has happened last week. I mean, uh, Zaman is the Tur Turkish opposition newspaper uh, that has had its headquarters raided before the weekend. And that raid happened on Friday on the HQ in Istanbul. And uh, this is also happened with, you had tear gas, a water cannon. There's some very striking images that came out over the weekend um, as the, the authorities entered the building to impose a court order to place the whole business under a new administration. Now, first, before we go into the details of uh, this takeover, can you tell us some of the accounts um, that your colleagues have told you, uh, the, what they have witnessed over the last few days? Well, <clears throat> of course, we were expecting some kind of, of a takeover because uh, since two years or even three years, uh, our colleagues, my colleagues, are intimidated by the justice, uh, planes uh, with legal action, and some of them were detained. So we were expecting something like this, but it was still shocking to see water cannons and tear gas uh, throw to our newsroom, because, you know, the newsroom is, is a sacred place for our journalists. They are all... Uh, so right now our siege is... Uh, under uh, invasion of uh, 2,000 policemen. Mm -hmm. They are within the building, they are around the building. Uh, so it's kind of a strange feeling to, to see uh, all of these. Turkey was not a perfect democracy, but we have never ever seen uh, something like this. Uh, it's, it's a new phenomenon. So, I mean, you're saying that these 2,000 police, the authorities are still there, they're blockading yes. the entire place. So the newspaper is like absolutely, has been completely taken over. Now, with this new administration that has been um, appointed by the court order, that means that um, the former editor-in-chief, or let's just say the editor-in-chief of the actual yeah. <laughs> Zaman newspaper, not the new Zaman newspaper, <laughs> um, who is Abdullah Mita Bilisi, um, where is he now? What has happened to the editor-in-chief? Is he in custody? Is he safe? Yeah. No, he, uh, he's the first one who has fired from Zaman. Uh, mm. And there are also other uh, 50 uh, of our colleagues who were fired at the first day. And they launched a, a new newspaper mm. uh, which, uh, within... 24 hours um, <laughs> just before the new Zaman uh, uh, yes. state, uh, which is called Yarna Bakish, uh, uh, look at tomorrow. Look at tomorrow, that's uh, the translation. Look at tomorrow, and they are trying to, uh, well, you know, to convince our readers, uh, the traditional Zaman readers, to come to Yarna Bakish. And, uh, and if you look at what happened, because the confiscation of Zaman, the takeover of Zaman, comes after many alarming developments, just... Uh, before days before the first November elections, mm. uh, Erdogan government uh, seized also uh, the IPEC media group, uh, which consists uh, to two TV channels, two newspapers. Uh, within four months, they had to shut down all these channels. Mm -hmm. So what will they do with Zaman? And they will do the same thing. They will shut down the Zaman, mm -hmm. which was the top selling newspaper in Turkey. Uh, there, were, there was also Jihan News Agency, the only independent news agency in Turkey. Uh, so it was very crucial for Erdogan's regime to, to control this media outlet. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just look. Um, there are headlines coming over the news wires today, uh, really underlining that the front page of Zaman, which is normally strongly critical of uh, President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, um, was published. Saying, it was on Sunday. It said it's published yeah. full of articles supporting the government and talking about the new bridge across the Bosphorus and ahead of Women's Day photos, a photo opportunity of Erdogan um, uh, embracing women and, uh, and basically coming across as the friendly president. Um, now, the whole thing is, when you go online, you can't actually see any of these images because the only access, especially in English, we can get is, I have a picture of it here today. Today's Zaman, it dates from Saturday, which is the 5th of uh, March. Any trying, any attempt to access zaman.co.tr is met with error not available. 
So what has happened here? I mean, they, for one, how come today's Zaman is still up online? Is that based somewhere else? And is it just the Turkish site is being shut down because basically they're waiting for it to be well, re-established under their own auspices? Is that it? Well, uh, the first action of the new administration was to delete all the archive of Zaman newspaper, ah. 30 years of Zaman newspaper. Mm. They deleted our Twitter account, Facebook account. They uh, shut down all, all of our servers. So uh, I believe that some of our colleagues tries to, to protect today's someone's mm. archive. So it's some kind of a war within the, uh, within the actual yeah. uh, between. The, it's, it's a, yes, it's a cyber well, war. Well, I'll, the... I'll hope that they will save uh, our archive. So mm -hmm. archive is for our for our for the journalists is everything. You know mm -hmm. they. Uh, and if you look, if you have a visit, if you can visit the, the Zaman newspaper's website, you mm. can see now a message. We will be back with more objective news. I, uh, yes. Uh, I can, well, we can guess uh, what they mean with objective news. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. Now, let's, looking away from Zaman, and I mean, we, we all hope that uh, everything works out well in the end. However, looking at the Turkish government itself, one of the first to condemn uh, this move last Friday and over the weekend was the United States. Now, today, we have uh, we have France's foreign minister, yeah. um, who uh, Jean-Marc Ayrault, who has come out and he has strongly condemned um, the, the, the seizure of the newspaper as unacceptable and against European values. Now, this, of course, is all happening on the day where the European Union and Turkey are holding a crucial summit, where Turkey is going... They're playing a very, very tight game where yeah. Turkey is asking for a lot from the EU. The EU needs Turkey to do a lot more. Do words like this as unacceptable and against European values have any effect on the government in Ankara? Of course. Uh, I mean, if you look at the seizure of Zaman, it comes just before the second Turkey EU summit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It was like a, like a slap in the face of European values. And we know that at least Erdogan thinks that he has a blank check or a green light to go after anyone who is critical of the government or the president. Uh, we know that Europe, especially Angela Merkel and the other European leaders, were pretty much silent on what's going on in Turkey since, uh, you know, six months. Uh, and what I believe that EU is trying to outsource uh, mm -hmm. uh, its problem, the refugee problem, to Erdogan, and he is willing to accept it. But, uh, well, he he wants to do anything he wants in, in his own country. But I believe that it's a risky strategy because, you know, uh, Erdogan uh, might actually create a bigger problem, a Turkish problem for Europe because we are... A, a polarized society mm. uh, for those who do not vote for Erdogan has been silenced. We don't have any media. Uh, Kurds, uh, the Kurdish people in Turkey are really in trouble and the situation is worsening. Uh, so we have a really uh, critical problem in Turkey and Europe is maybe not directly but helping Erdogan to, go to to follow his uh, political agenda. Well, this is another interesting point where today you had uh, President Erdogan um, complaining before really the starting, before this uh, summit got underway, complaining that uh, there's been a four-month delay on these three billion euros that have been promised by the EU. However, he has sent uh, Prime Minister Davutoglu to be there as uh, the good cop, where he's in the background being the bad cop. I mean, uh, will this actually watch with the EU? Now, we're running out of time here, just very quickly and maybe the, the next minute. How do you think the EU will actually take to this good cop, bad cop uh, relationship that uh, Turkey is putting forward? Well, this good cop, bad cop thing is pretty obvious. Mm. But uh, I believe what Erdogan needs, what Erdogan wants is not for a billion euros, is not uh, to accession to European Union. He is a very precise political agenda, agenda uh, which is to create uh, some sort of a dictatorship in Turkey. He wants a green light to his political project from Europe. He needs the silence of the European leaders. And that's it. OK, my thank you very much. The, my big thanks to Emery Demir, who's the chief editor of Zaman France, for being on the programme today. Thank you. Thank you.